Hi, my name is Carrie Leroy, and I'm going to talk today about willow litter breakdown and early successional streams, influences of nitrogen addition, weevil or bivory, plant sex, and litter type. And I'd like to thank my co-authors. So an early successional landscape for stream ecology exists on the flanks of Mount St. Helens. Here's a photo of Mount St. Helens prior to the eruption sitting on Spirit Lake. And here's a picture from May 18th, 1980 at 8.32 in the morning. The massive lateral eruption resulted in one of the largest landslides um, in recorded history and a whole lot of organic matter inputs. So this is a picture of Spirit Lake the day after the eruption. And the gray surface you see is actually covered with massive downed logs. The entire lake got up to 30 degrees Celsius and was anoxic and methanotrophic. And I mention this because it basically wasn't a great um, colonization source for aquatic organisms. Here you can see the entire eruptive landscape of Mount St. Helens with Spirit Lake in the kind of the center of the screen. And this area circled in yellow is called the Pumice Plain. This will be the area that we've been focusing on this, um, this early successional landscape. So it really looked like the moon out there uh, right after the eruption, nothing but pumice, um, very consistent parent material, sometimes up to 100 meters uh, thick. And this is what Mount St. Helens looks like today, um, sitting at Spirit Lake. And this is what the pumice plain is starting to look like. Lots of plants are colonizing. We see lots of new watersheds forming. We see these little gullies being colonized by riparian plants. And so ribbons of green, a really interesting early successional landscape for studying how watersheds develop. So here's a picture showing the pyroclastic flow zone, Spirit Lake, and four of the five watersheds that have formed on the pumice plain. And one of the main um, colonizers is Sitka willow. So I'm going to dig into um, Sitka willow and how it's influencing these early streams. So the National Volcanic Monument was established in 1982. We've done surveys across um, the pumice plain. The, designated area of, of research is about 110,000 acres. And what's nice is that it's really been allowed for the most part to recover naturally. It's basically a large passive restoration experiment. And so across this primary succession landscape and five watersheds we've surveyed, we found actually quite a lot of early colonizers. Again, probably not coming from Spirit Lake, but coming in in other ways. We've seen, um, we have identified 38 riparian plants, 55 paraphyton algae, um, 96 diatoms, and over 85 different species of benthic macroinvertebrates. So it's, you know, it's developing into a pretty rich um, community. Now at Sitka Willow, um, is really interesting because it's a dioecious species. And it that means it, it has both male and female flowers, but in this case, it actually has male willows and female willows. They, they have different individuals. And so you can find willows on the landscape and you can determine their sex. Um, in addition, the, the pumice plain has been colonized by this um, stem boring weevil. It's the poplar willow borer. And it was introduced in, to North America in the 20s, but to Mount St. Helens in 1989. And the reason it's really interesting is that it interacts with willow, bores into the stem or the branch, causes branch mortality, causes leaf litter input, leaf litter death and fall, and potentially can kill the willow. So um, we've been surveying willows and um, weevil uh, damage across the pumice plain. And what we found is um, when we start looking at willows and determining their sex, we're finding that females colonize closer to the stream. We also find that weevils are more likely to infect and um, cause damage to female willows. Um, and so we see more weevil damage on willows and we see willows growing closer to the stream, female willows growing closer to the stream. These two things in combination mean that the streams of the pumice plain are getting more organic matter inputs from both willows and from weevil affected willows. 
um, sorry, from both female willows and weevil affected willows. Now the leaf litter itself um, has slightly lower nitrogen concentrations in female litter, higher in males, but it has, and it has a higher C to N ratio for females than um, males and really no difference in carbon or condensed tannins. Digging further into litter chemistry, we can use time of flight mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry to look at hundreds of compounds in these willow leaves. And we find that 362 are gen generally only found in male willows and a, and a separate 272 compounds are only found in female willows. And so there's a lot, there's a, a rich kind of phytochemistry that could be influencing ecosystem function and communities. And one of the ways is through leaf litter decomposition. So um, here you can see that although the decomposition rates themselves are not different, the male litter tends to lose mass um, at each time step a little bit faster than female litter. Now, in collaboration with John Bishop, who's established a Willow Common Garden in 2013, um, we have this really neat study where we've applied nitrogen to, um, to different willow blocks, these plots, eight by eight meter plots. And we've, they've sprayed the plots with bifenthrin, which kills the weevils. And so in 2019, we collected litter from these different treatments with a combination of nitrogen additions and weevil, no weevil um, treatments. And what we found was that the whether there was a weevil or not available or um, attacking the, the willows, the nitrogen treatments did lead to increased nitrogen in the leaves, uh, which makes sense. And um, overall, these plots, we saw lots of variation in uh, decomposition rates. Unfortunately, none of these were really in line with either the weevil or the nitrogen treatment. Um, although there are differences, significant differences among the plots, um, I think that many of the, the weevil plots actually didn't produce much litter. Those, those willows, um, if they're not protected from weevils, um, are quite damaged and small and not producing a lot of leaf litter. Plus the study was not, um, didn't keep in, didn't track male and female uh, willows. And so the treatments could be confounded with plant sex. But nonetheless, these, these different litter treatments uh, resulted in significant differences between weevil and no weevil litter for aquatic invertebrate colonizers um, early in the study. And these patterns are mainly driven by non-insects. And then later in the study, we see significant interactions between the weevil treatments and the nitrogen additions. So in particular, the weevil treatment um, at the high nitrogen uh, addition differed from all other treatments, and that was um, mainly due to trichopterin and plecopterin indicator species. And the no weevil treatments had significantly more ephemeropterins. The last thing I'll talk about are different types of litter inputs um, to these systems. And so willow flowers may be a novel input to streams. There's only a few studies of reproductive inputs mainly focused on pollen and willow flowers tend to be large and abundant and possibly are an important organic matter input to streams. So here's a study by an undergraduate named Iris Garthwaite using flower litter bags and female leaf litter bags. And she even found um, aquatic insects in her litter bags that had used the flower capsules to create their cases like this caddis fly. So we know these inputs might be important. Now there's not a strong difference in decomposition between the catkins and the leaves. However, the pattern of decomposition is really different. And so what you can see is a very linear pattern for the triangles for the catkin litter. And then this really steep drop in um, the squares, the leaves. And what that represents is a massive leaching loss, like 25% of the leaf material is lost in the first seven days. So although the, the decomposition rates overall didn't differ much, the pattern of decomposition is very different between leaves and catkins. And the number of and diversity of aquatic invertebrates that colonize these leaf litter bags is also quite different with higher abundance and diversity in the catkin litter bags. And overall, a significant difference in the community colonizing the catkin litter bags as well. Here the, um, we have the catkins are in, um, uh, gray and the leaves are in black. 
So in conclusion, male willows have higher nitrogen, lower carbon to nitrogen, and 362 unique chemical compounds, whereas female willows have lower percent nitrogen, higher C to N, and 272 unique compounds. These things in combination um, lead the female leaf litter to lose mass slower than males. Um, and um, interestingly, female willows tend to colonize closer to the stream, likely due to increased resource needs to produce the larger uh, reproductive structures of catkins. The females that we surveyed were also more likely to be infected by weevils. Um, and these two things in combination, being closer to the streams and more infected by weevils, mean the females are more likely to drop their litter into streams. So in, in combination with all of this, weevil damage increases leaf percent nitrogen, influences the benthic macroinvertebrate community, and interacts with nitrogen additions at the landscape scale, things like nitrogen deposition. Um, and female flowers tend to lose mass more slowly and host more and more diverse benthic macroinvertebrates than leaves. So all of these things lead us to wonder whether we're seeing this kind of uh, gendered primary succession landscape. How much of an influence are these differences in plant, willow plant sex, having on the development of these watersheds at the Pumice Plain? So uh, I'd like to thank all of my amazing undergraduates at the Evergreen State College for the past five years. I really couldn't do any field or lab work without their assistance. And I'd like to thank the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Forest Service for our permit, John Bishop's research team, and all of of my excellent collaborators. I'd also like to point you to um, a proposed road construction project um, across the Pumice Plain and an article um, in the recent uh, edition of Science Magazine. Thank you for your